Welcome to Steelers Weekly. I'm your host, Brian Schmidt, and uh, with me, as always, Dwight Stone. Dwight, how you doing tonight? Hey, my heart's still beating, buddy. It's still beating. Oh, I'm doing great. That's how are it. you doing? You know, the, 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 the heart's still beating. I have, you know, I have not punched a wall. I have not banged my head against the wall, and uh, the sun came up, and, you know, rolling from there. Uh, boy, you know, I, I don't even know where to begin. Uh mm. Bad loss to Baltimore, uh, you know, everything about that game. Uh, you know, Ben coming back from injury has always been very hit and miss. Now now we will get into uh, his record in the second game uh, coming back from injury, which I think is very interesting. Uh, but mm-hmm. offensively, very out of sync. Uh, defensively, uh, you know, played okay at, time, but, at times, but, I mean, just – could not, could not, you know, mm-hmm. hold the damn back as the game yeah. went on. Uh, uh, undisciplined in, in, in every phase of the game. Uh, penalties, uh, just every phase. Uh, yeah, that's kind of my take on it. I'm going to turn it over to you and, and, and kind of let you roll with uh, what you saw. You're, you're right. I mean, it's, it's kind of like, and it's a shame to say, there's nothing against the Raiders, but the Raiders are known for their penalties. You know, they, they're known like, hey, just the way we play, you know, we get our penalties, but we win, you know, some of the time. And that wasn't a typical uh, Sealer uh, game. You know, you got Big Ben coming back. Everybody, you know, they got a two-game losing streak, and everybody, like, on board, you want Ben back. They think that, you know, the Ravens are the cure, you know, to get them back on track. And lo and behold, you go up there in Raven country, and they, I guess, realize that they didn't read the same thing we read, that they weren't supposed to be in the game. You know, that they came out, and one of the biggest plays that you saw was a 95-yard touchdown uh, from who else but your boy. Well, he, he takes it to the house. And like I said, they're undisciplined. That's not, that's not Steelers football, man. I, I, I'm kind of surprised that uh, Tom would let them get to that point. I, I, I never thought that he was a guy that would let his guys be like almost a parasite over the ship. You know, you, it's like they I do my thing, you know, we win, we win. I'm just surprised by the way that is. And hopefully they get that ship, you know, back on course and have the right person leading it. Well, I mean, here we are right now. I mean, we're at 4-4. Four four. Uh, mm-hmm. Obviously, not where we thought we'd be at this point in the season. No. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the flip side is, you know, we got we got eight games left, and, and, and nobody's running away with our division right now. Uh you know, you get that ship right, and now you you know you start looking at a you know eleven and five, ten and six, mm-hmm. uh, make the playoffs. You're okay, but but here's here's the question. Uh, mm. I got my own opinion on this one. I'm gonna get yours okay. first. Uh, All right, Mike Tomlin. Uh, yes. Steelers don't make the playoffs this year. Should he be the head coach of the Pittsburgh Steelers next year? Now, if you tell asking me if if the Rooney's going will keep him, the Rooney's are the type of uh, uh, owners that they are loyal. I mean, through thick or thin, they they if they got a guy that they gonna believe in, they know sometimes things may happen. They they they, they will write it out. They now they be facing some uh, assistant coaches changes in that you know because they said that get, uh, the coach head coach is only as good as the assistants. Assistants only as good as their players they put out there and the way they make them. So if you ask me that question, I think he will be back uh, with the Roonies. I think there will be some uh, changes for his personnel and players and in assistant coaches. But I think the Roonies will bring him back, you know. But he now, putting, putting you on the spot, that yeah. you are the one that makes the decision. <laughs> uh, uh. Do you have him coming back next year if they don't make the playoffs? Hmm. Uh. I, I prob- oh, oh man, I probably see how it, how it plays out to the end. You know, uh, even if they don't make it, just to see what kind of whether 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 players getting better, or things getting better, or things staying the same. If things staying the same, you know, it's one of those things that oh man, you got me on that one. <laughs> you got me on that one. I, I really don't know. I mean, uh, I know that. If they let him go, somebody's going to grab him just like that. But at the same time, you want to make sure that you don't want to get adjusted to being 
not saying things bad about the Raiders, but the kind of a Raider team where undisciplined and having 200 yards and penalties and, and you know, and you hope to win the game. But I, I really don't know. I cannot I mean, you caught me off guard on that one. And now I'm going to throw it back to you. Now, if you wow. had a chance to make a, <laughs> pull the trigger, they make the playoff, what would you do? I'll tell you, it's been, this has been on my mind uh, since I got posed the question uh, early Monday. Oh, so you got a head start on me. Oh, yeah, I believe me. This thing has, it, it has been a uh, – I have been very much a pro Mike Tomlin guy Yeah. Uh, from day one. I, I think, his, you know, his attitude, his fire, the way he conducts himself, I think there's so many things about him that I've always liked. The things that I have not liked uh, mm-hmm. that we've seen over the years, and, and, and quite frankly – I think this year, I think our, our bigger, as, you know, obviously we talked a couple weeks ago about the uh, uh, about the comment, uh, you know, his, his record with uh, sub five hundred teams being you know below five hundred. We we we've, we've talked about the time, you know, you know, it seems like over the last two three years, uh, you know, it seems like uh, discipline at times is lacking. We talked about, you know, this team really is about uh, Ben Roethlisberger. Bottom line is, without Ben, we, I mean. Yes. Where would we be? Uh, there you go. Um, after Sunday's performance, which I will say this, I I was born in Allegheny General Hospital. Anybody that's you know in Pittsburgh, they know they know where that is. Uh, you know, I I've, I've seen Steeler games. You know, I was born in the '70s, so I was there during the all the Super Bowls. I've been there. You know, '80s, '90s, you know, 2000s. I've I've been part of this from the day I was born and Sunday may will rank up there as one of the most disappointing Steelers performances wow. ever. Uh, it will certainly be in my top three or four that I can think of off the top of my head and I try not to think about wow. those things but because uh, to me that game was unacceptable mm-hmm. uh, I agree with that to to walk to, to to walk into that football game, coming off a bye week, bye, and you walk into that game and play like that, and I'm not talking about, you know, Ben Ben's play certainly was not there, but but we know in the past when he has come off of injury, there yeah. he has at times not played well. So yeah. I'm not. Yeah. You know, Ben is going to get a pass with me because, again, coming back to my comment from earlier, without him, where would we be? Exactly. Um, however, the game plan, the penalties, especially the penalties, mm-hmm. the undisciplined play, the not being in the right spot. Folks, that's, that's a lot of coaching right there. And, uh, um, coming off a bye week again, and I keep saying that coming off a bye week. Uh, so to answer the question, quite frankly, um, I think this comes down to if it were me, uh, if the Steelers don't make the playoffs, I, I seriously think I'm looking for a new head coach next year. And, and being a football coach, that's very hard for me to say because you know I'm I'm a full time professional coach. I coach, you know. <laughs> If I'm not coaching, I don't have a job. Uh, this is my job. So I to say that uh, there has to be a lot to happen for me to say that. But I, I look. The bottom line is this: uh, when I see the undisciplined play, yes. When I see uh, guys not in the right spot, that's coaching. And and and, and inevitably, you can you can blame assistants. You can blame players, but inevitably it all comes Back. Yep. right at the head coach. Uh, so for me right now, if they don't make playoffs, I mean, I, I would definitely, for me, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for a new head coach. Now, having said that, four and four right now, mm-hmm. uh, the one thing that I've always liked about Mike Tomlin is 
I believe he is one of the better coaches in the NFL when it comes to rallying the troops. Yes, yeah, motivating. Yes. I believe that he is one of the best coaches in the NFL when the back is to the wall, mm-hmm. he will rally the troops and you will see a different Pittsburgh Steelers team. So for me, that's all I want to see right now. <laughs> it's like um, you and a few people. <laughs> you know, I'm 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 making this as simple as I possibly can. That's what I want to see right now. Is I to be rallied, which we've seen happen before. Um I think when you put the Pittsburgh Steeler team with their back against the wall, historically they have shown Mm-hmm. Uh, that's when they come out and play their best football. We saw that even last year, uh, the end of last year. I mean, when yeah. the back went to the wall, they played their best football. And we've seen that historically. So my thing is this. My 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 bottom line is this. Still, let's make the playoffs. My Thomas should be the head coach next year. But mm-hmm. it comes down to discipline play. It comes down to not going into a game looking unprepared and 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 and, and coming off a bye week. That's unexcusable. Yes, that that yes. should that's just inexcusable. That that uh, should never happen. That is no, not right. And and it happened. Uh, so as you know, for me, I, I'm keeping this extremely 100 percent real because as a Steeler fan, uh, you know, I also. I have the, the hard time, and it's the same as you do as a, as a former Steeler player. Mm-hmm. We're fans, but because of our, you know, in your case, being a former player, in my case, uh, I coach now, what we do for a living also plays a part because we're not just the normal fan. We've been there. You yeah. know, I, I coach now professionally at, at you know, arena football. I, I'm around guys that have been in the NFL. Um, I know what it's like, you know, to, to have your, your head on the chopping block as a coach. I, I get it. Uh, you as a player, you know, you know, you're only as good as sometimes as your last game. And oh, yes. So for me to say what I'm saying, it, it, there's, there's a lot to that. Um, and that's why I, I, I come back to, I, I believe that, you know, Steelers make the playoffs mm-hmm. is, is a non-issue. But my concern coming out of this game has been, you know, a few times this year, and, and I've seen it, you know, last year at times, I've seen it the year before that, is the undisciplined play, and it seems to be getting worse. Worse. That's what concerns me. You're right. I mean, but you realize, you know, that they're not playing a slouch coming in town now. They got somebody that can give them an L just like the rest of them. I mean, the and Dallas Cowboys. The, <laughs> and you are exactly right. And that's the thing. I mean, you're talking about Prescott. Yeah. You're talking about Elliott. You're talking about maybe the best offensive line best in the NFL. Best offensive line, yes. Exactly. Best uh, offensive line in the NFL. You know, the, if, if, the, if, if the Steelers play undisciplined and don't come into this game prepared, mm. you know, quite honestly, mm. Steelers offense, which I think can put points up and can and can score against Dallas, and you know, we'll talk about that here in a second. But the bottom line is this: uh, if you don't do something to contain Elliott, he's going to run for 200 yards, and you're going to see again. about you're going to see go. about you're going to see about 20, 25 minutes of possession time. <laughs> uh, because they're going to put the ball in his hands and they're going to feed him the ball yes, continuously. They, yes, they will. So there's a lot mm. to this. Now, you know, coming into this game, I, I do believe this. Um, Steelers get back to playing their offense. You know, ben, you know Ben's record, and, and I had somebody say this the other day, and, and, and I, Ben's record in the second game coming off of uh, injury is something like like seven and two, eight and two, something like that. Oh wow! Uh, and his performances coming off of injury in the second game has been uh, generally extremely high level. So uh, you know, as I said, I mean, he's going to be back. 
Um, he's yeah. going to be back to his form. I believe that. Uh, but, but it's, you know, the mistakes, the penalties. Uh, that's it. You know, I, I, I felt this was a very unprepared football team coming into Baltimore. Uh, you cannot have that against Dallas because Dallas will put the L on you with faster than ours. <laughs> so, I mean, I, I that's, that's where I'm at with this. I mean, you know, as far as Dallas is concerned, I mean, you know, what do you feel they have to do offensively? The Steelers have to do offensively to win this football game offensively. Like you said, the penalties. I mean, the Steelers have committed like 10 penalties for 84 yards, and they had ran 23 plays for 67 yards and just two first downs. They were 0 for 7 uh, in the third down in, in, the first, in the first position of the games. He completed um, passes for seven yards and and they played playing like seven times. I mean, they're showing that Pittsburgh came out and they stalled, stalled, stalled. Dallas team is not stalling. I mean, they're coming out, they're putting points on the board either by air or by ground. You know, they they're, they're making it happen. In order for the Steelers to, to get to where they need to go, they got to control the ball, keep the ball out of Dallas offensive hand because they have weapons. You got Des Bryant. That's on top of the running back and the quarterback, you know. And you got a running quarterback that even give you more problems. So now you got to realize, like, which poison should I take? It's kind of like the old uh, Troy Aikman, Emmett, and uh, the crazy guy they had. Uh, <laughs> the receiver. Uh, Michael Irvin. Michael Irvin, yes. <clears throat> and he, he was a great one at that. And he, each one of them are playing off each other. And also you got Whitman. I mean, you, you got four people that – you can go to each high, low ground. I, it's amazing what they bring to the table. But Pittsburgh have to come, first of all, control themselves. Penalties are unacceptable. I mean, those are things. That's, just, that's a mental error. That's a, uh, what's a uh, yeah, ME. You know, it's a mental error. I mean, that's something that the ball's on two. Okay, count on two, ready, break. You know, you jump offside, you're holding. If you're holding, you're doing something wrong. You're not doing the right technique. Not saying it's not going to happen, but if you're making that an everyday thing, if you're not doing that practice, that's why I don't like everybody said they're not uh, they, they're going too much in practice, they're too physical in practice. Well, if you're not doing their practice, you can get bad habits in games. I know Ben had made a comment about they're going too hard, you know, in practice. Well, the techniques that they are learning are bad techniques because they're not learning in practice on in pads. If you're in pads and you learn them, it's second instinct. Pittsburgh has to not beat themselves because Dallas is going to be enough problem for them. So if they start giving Dallas a plus, Dallas will take it. And Dallas does not need any gifts from anybody because you look at that squad, that squad is one of the best offense. And they got a nice young defense, too, that will get at you, you know, in the league. So we don't need to give nobody gimmies. Our job is to play our game. No mistakes. Keep the ball out of their opposite hand. Yeah, I, it, it comes down to this. Uh, we got to score points. Uh, we are not going to defensively. We are not going to stop Dallas. Dallas, we've no. got to slow them down. <laughs> um, but the bottom line is this. If Dallas is putting points up and we're not, uh, you yeah, know, long day, long day again is going to wow. happen. Uh, if we're if if we're putting offensively because of stupid penalties, we're putting ourselves in first and twenty, second and twenty. Exactly. Uh, you know, I can tell you this as a play caller. Uh, you know, <laughs> there is nothing on your play sheet for second and twenty. Um, I I have been in that situation, and honestly, you look at your play sheet, and and you know you. You seriously, you know, I, I I can remember a few times, even even last year, uh, you know, a guy getting a holding call in second and twenty, and just looking looking at my play sheet, looking at him, and just when you pick dummy, because I mean, yeah, this gets tough. You know, second and twenty, it, you're now just hoping you get the third and ten and be manageable. Um, you know, heaven help you if you're at third and twenty, because I believe me, there is nothing on your play sheet for third and 20. 
you know, all, all, all you're doing is, is putting your hands together with a prayer. Going on, you know, you know, Lord, I need one. Give me one. Oh, boy. That's all you got. So when we're sitting here at a, you know, and, and, and we saw it Sunday, second and one, uh, there's not a lot there. But you're, you know, you're second and twenty, pretty much get the punt team ready. You're going to get about maybe one out of every ten of those. It's a bad situation to be in. Yeah. We got to stay out of that. Uh, defensively, Dallas got a lot of weapons. Uh, even oh, a man. good defense, um, your poison. You're going to have problems with Dallas because, boy, they, like you just said, pick your poison. Who do you, who do you you know, you put eight in the box, nine in the box to stop Elliott. You got Brian and Witten. Yes. Oh my. Yes. You try to you try to play things a little bit more base. That yeah. offensive line and Elliott are going to run it down your throat. Um, there's a lot there, but you've got to at least offer some resistance. Yes. Um, make them put them in positions to make a couple mistakes. Uh, that's where this game is going to be won and lost. Mm. Yes. Putting defensively, putting them in a situation where it's just not always easy, and offensively and, and, and defensively, stay away from the fix, the offside. Uh, the you know, you know the stupid penalties. I mean, pass interference. You know that happens, but but stay away from putting yourself in the bad spots. To, to now where you're taking a third and eight and giving them a five yard offsides penalty, and now it's third and three. You know, don't give them that opportunity. And you know, offensively, same thing. It, it just it's going to come down to football, ladies and gentlemen. This is this is as simple <laughs> as it gets. It's coming down to football. Yes. You do the right things, talent wise, we should win this game. Uh, we're at home. Great place yes. to be. Oh man. Uh, but if you if you're doing the wrong things believe me, Dallas has the ability to walk into Pittsburgh and if Pittsburgh plays anything close to what they played last weekend. Thank you. This game is gonna get ugly. It's gonna get ugly quick. Yes. Very quick. And you and I are going to be sitting here next Wednesday pretty much having the same conversation we're having right now. I pray we don't, <laughs> really. The last three weeks yeah. have been hard. Yeah, it's been real hard. So, you know, for me, it, it, come, it, it comes down to simple football. There you go. Simple, simple. football. And, you know, and, and, and we've got to, you know, you've got to put Bell, the Bell, Again, he's got to be a big part of the offense. Yes. Yes. Uh, so, you know, there's there's so many things about this. Uh, you can't make it any more difficult than than, than it, this is all about football, doing the right things, no penalties, no stupid mistakes. Uh, get the ball to your playmakers. Uh, ben, ben got that rush. You know, yes. You know, the end of the game last it, 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 him. Yes. Get more time. So, so you know, I fully expect him to have the typical Ben game. But you know, it's 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 also got to be people around him. You know, you know, we've got to start taking the mountain to win a football game off of his shoulders, and we've got to start distributing that mountain through everybody. Because right now we. Do not win a football game unless Ben plays. That's right. You know, out of his mind. Um, yes, he has Antonio Bryant. He has Bell. He has weapons. But, but quite honestly, where do those weapons go when Ben is not out there, or Ben's not that's playing well? That's right. They're nowhere to be found, and and that tells me, as great a receiver as Antonio Brown is, and he's a great receiver. Um. He is as much a product right now of Ben. That's right. Uh, than anything. 
and and that and that tells me a lot. And that's just being very honest because I'm a big Antonio yeah. Brown fan. But the one thing that that I that I have seen is uh, without Ben, he struggles. Yes, you. And that tells me a lot. You're right. I mean, there's there's nobody out there. I mean, Big Ben. If you look at it, Big Ben is the I think the most important guy uh, on the team. I mean, you start looking at, you know, people say you got a nice guy here, a nice guy there. If Ben is not clicking, the kind of guy that can prolong a play. He's a big guy. I mean, you grabbing him, you got a defensive lineman grabbing him. He's shedding them off. He's used to making the play extend to get the ball to Antonio, to get the ball to Jesse James, to all his receiver, to the back, Dale and William. He can do that. Ain't too many quarterbacks can do that. And, you know, Everybody hangs on Ben. I mean, like you say, if Ben ain't good, like Cole said, if Mom ain't happy, what? Ain't nobody happy. Ain't nobody doing good. I just like Ben. Yeah. If Ben ain't doing good, ain't really nobody doing good. And Ben, I believe, he said he hasn't been home. He hasn't played a home game in a while, he said. And he said he's excited being back home. He ready, to, you know, to come home and get a victory. I, I'm, I'm all on board. They said yeah. uh, they don't need nobody to convince him. Big Ben is going to uh, bring his A game. I, I know he will this game. Yeah, I, I believe that, and, and, and I feel this game, you know, this is when, hey, bottom line is you put a win You put a win up here, you're 5-4, and four and, and, yes. and you beat Dallas, and now, now you get an opportunity where everybody. There you go. Let's all, let's all take that deep breath and go, okay, here we go, you know, mm-hmm. again. Uh, you know, once we get through this Dallas game, I mean, the schedule – Yes. Uh, you know, I don't want to say it gets lighter because, you know, again, we, we, we talked about yeah. that. You know, but you control your own destiny. you got breathing room. You've got yes. Baltimore again. You've got, you know, Bengals again. You control yes. your own destiny. Um, and that, to me, you know, that that's what you want. Uh, yes. you want. You don't want to have to be chasing anybody. Uh, you want to control your destiny, and, and, and at that point, they will control their destiny. And, I mean, you know, you look at this, you know, you know coming coming on the back end, um, you know, mm-hmm. you've got, Cleveland after this twice. Cowboys game, mm-hmm. you've got the Browns. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah. You got, Browns twice. Mm-hmm. You've got the Browns and the Colts. Yes. you got Giants at home. you got at the Bills, at the Bengals. You've got the Ravens at home, and you've got the Browns. Yes. I mean, that's, so mm, yeah. Let's look at that schedule. I mean, you come out of this one five and four. Mm-hmm. Now, by by paper, you know the next two weeks should be wins. That's seven and four. You know the Giants. That's right. Should be a win at home. That's eight and four. The Bills are playing pretty good football right now. So yeah, you know, exactly. we'll, we'll, you know right that's that Buffalo. So yeah. you know, you know that's ten and four, nine and five. Uh. But then, you know, your last three games are the Bengals, Ravens, and Browns. You yes. Control your own destiny. Your division. Yes. So, <laughs> you know, there's a lot to this uh, game. And, 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 again, a loss, well, it doesn't kill you. Man, I don't want to have to come back here next week and be talking about a loss. So, you know, this is one we got to get. So, uh, no, yes. You know, when you look at this game score-wise, you know, what, what kind of score you see – happening in this game. If the I haven't checked the weather, but if the weather is, is nice, Dallas Dallas gonna put their points on the board, I'm just telling you now. It's gonna be a shootout. And when Dallas can put up at least twenty eight points, say I think they average like twenty four points. I'm going I'm going Dallas thirty. Um well, we we may win by you know, so I'm guessing. Winning by 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 three. I don't know how that's gonna happen, but I say twenty seven to thirty. I'm going. I'm going to go uh, pretty close to the same thing, but I'm, I'm going to say Pittsburgh will win this. Uh, for Pittsburgh to win this, in my opinion, they've got to score over 30 points. Um, so I, I'm looking at a you know a, a 33, 27, 33, 30 mm-hmm. score. Because um, in my opinion, Pittsburgh is going to have to put over 30 points. I, I Dallas is going to get there just because they're going to get there. Left. They are. You know they're. You know, you don't want to turn it into a sieve where, I mean, they're just like they're playing against air. Um, and, you know, a couple turnovers would be helpful. 
But at the end of the day, they're going to get there. They're going to get there. They're going to get there. So to me, you 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 put you put the score up, you make it, you know, a thirty three thirty game, a thirty five thirty game. Uh, but the bottom line is, you come out of this with an exciting win, and and now you start. You know, now you start cultivating and start looking at, okay, we're five and four. Here we go. We control our own destiny. Let's go. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, that's uh, that's pretty much where I've got it. I, I think that for the Steelers to win, I think they've got to score over 30 points. And, and if they don't, uh, it's going to – it's it, it's not going to be good, uh, quite frankly. I, I don't – you know, you know anything in the 20s, I think, becomes a 50-50 proposition. It's, Steelers score over thirty, I think. You know, you know. Now the percentages go up. Anything under twenty score from from a Steeler offense, uh, the percentage of winning this game would be go down greatly. Wow. Um, I I think it's fifty fifty if the game's in the twenties. I think if, if Steelers score thirty or more, I think that gives them a good you know seventy five eighty percent chance to win. I think this thing if this thing is you know Steelers score under twenty. To me now, I mean now you're talking. You know, to, to, the Cowboys are going to get yes. at least 24 points. Oh yes. There's too. There's too much. There's too many weapons. Too many. I mean. Um. I mean, this is a this is a very good Cowboy offense. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, too many weapons. Position. So it, it's going to come down to you know, got to put points up. And and we've got to do enough defensively, get a couple turnovers, slow them down enough to allow the offense to get that thirty. Mm-hmm. The eight thirty is the magic number. Mm-hmm. And the weather gonna be fifty six degrees on kickoff. And so the- it's gonna be nice. So yes. So well, with that, any final words this week? Well, yeah, I want to say hello to uh, Florella, F L O R A L A. That's where I grew up at, Florella, Alabama. And Marion and Middle Tennessee, those people have been supporting me throughout my life. I want to say thank them for everything they have done for me. And I just always trying to say, never forget where you come from. Well, absolutely, and you know, I, I again, I enjoy having having you on here every week. Uh, always a good time. Always great talking yeah. to you. <laughs> you make me laugh. <laughs> I need it. I you need know, it too. So, uh, <laughs> Oh, yeah, gotta yeah. have fun. Gotta have fun, especially yeah. when you when when you're not winning. It, it's hard to have fun, so you gotta have fun. But uh, oh, okay. yeah, everybody, check out all the other shows that are on uh, Growing Truth. Uh, we got boxing, we got other football shows, NFL, college, CFL. We got baseball, we got basketball, we got college basketball, college football. I think we got. I think I think we've got covered <laughs> most every sport. We've got hockey, soccer, and yeah, auto racing. I think we've got about everything. So with that, everybody take a listen. And, uh, you know, we will be back here next week. And uh, for Dwight Stone, I'm Brian Schmidt. And go Steelers. Everybody have a great week. And we'll see you next week. Bye, everybody.